My, how the time flies. Today marks 43 years since the incredible eruption of Mount St. Helens. It covered the Northwest in clouds of ash. And if you were around in those days, there's just no forgetting it. I was 17 years old living in Bellevue outside of Seattle. I remember being glued to TV most of the day watching the incredible news coverage, including shots like this. Our relatives from Spokane called to say that the streetlights were coming on because so much ash was falling there that it had gotten dark. KGW crews were covering the eruption from the air and on the ground that day, seeing and feeling the effects up close and personal. So let's head to the KGW vault with the help of former KGW reporter Boyd Levitt. This is a special report of the King Broadcasting Network live from KGW News 8 in Portland, Oregon. First, we take you live to Amboy, Washington, where reporter Boyd Levitt is standing by in the shadow of Mount St. Helens. Boyd? For Robin and Ralph, the volcano's blasts have come with a vengeance today. The spectacle of the massive plume is one that few will forget. With a little bit of wind from the west late today, we can get a little better view of it uh, this afternoon than we had earlier in the day to see that the conically shaped top of the mountain is now gone. That in fact, there's a rounded appearance to the top of the volcano. Uh, that the steam and the ash are coming from a wide area on top. Obviously, there is a very large crater there. Well, certainly a historic day, but uh, you know, those memories sear themselves into your, uh, into your mind. And so it was the first day somewhere around mid-March, well, March 20, if I remember right, when there was an earthquake and it was a 5.0 sort of thing. And uh, my assignment was simply on day one to go up and do something uh, with the story about an earthquake. A few moments ago, we felt one of those strong earthquakes. We were sitting in our news car at about 9.05 in the morning. First, a slow rocking motion and then a few fast jolts and then several aftershocks. But when the bulge started on the north side of the mountain and there was this pressure pushing up and, and the whole edge of the mountain was sort of creeping up like that, then the geologists said to themselves and then to the public, this is something potentially very, very dangerous. I, I will admit that at one point uh, I stood on the top of the mountain as the bulge was bulging and uh, you could look at it horizontally and it was growing at the rate of five feet a day and that was worrisome to everybody. We've got an eruption down here. Now we got a big slide coming off. The slide is coming off of the west slope. And uh, the station called and said, ah, it's changed big time. And it took me about 30 seconds to get my hiking boots on and all my gear and uh, that uh, iconic KGW blue jacket out the door, uh, into town, um, up through the Tewilliger curves, and there it was. We weren't quite prepared for what we saw today and what we smelled today. Inside the aircraft here, a sickening stench of hydrogen sulfide. 57 families lost loved ones in this and several of my friends as well. So um, that it was a story of drama that didn't end on May 18th, it was just beginning. As the ash is continuing to come out of the mountain at this hour at sunset here on the southwest side of Mount St. Helens. And from our position on the top of Mount Amboy, I'm Boyd Levitt reporting. 